here's a nice picture of the last few weeks. Um, starting to see the, the spy is showing signs of rolling over a little bit. Now we're gapping up this morning, global markets, some strong, some stocks in our markets, uh, Walmart and Cisco obviously being very large market cap stocks, um, especially Walmart. So, um, but we're right, you know, we're kind of right in the middle of this range from the last week. Um, there's nothing worse, no matter what time frame you're trading on, of taking trades in the middle of ranges. Um, you, get to, you tend to get a little bit of a noise, random price action. Now, if we were to pop on the open, the 257.80 to 258, that would be interesting. Or if we were to drop down here to 257, um, 256.90 and catch a bid, um, those are the two spots that you can look at, um, gauge uh, market behavior on the SPY side. Uh, IWM. PayPal, PYPL. This is, it's gapping a little bit outside of this, this downtrend that formed over the last couple of weeks. Um, so we finally got a flush through 145 uh, right on the open yesterday. And after getting back above there, we had a nice bounce. We didn't take out the prior day's high. Um, we did sell off a bid into the close, and then the after hours, looks like they dropped out the bids for just right after the close. Um, okay. The way I look at this is, as long as we're holding above, let's say, 145.70s, 145.80, um, this is constructive behavior for IWM. I think the form starts to move sideways in here and holds higher, and then you get a close back above 147. Uh, the way this thing moves, you could be right back up where this started from here. So, but as of right now, step one, you got the flush through the, you know, this 145, you got to close above. Now you got to see it kind of move sideways, hold higher. And, and at a minimum, you want to see a close above uh, uh, Tuesday's, Tuesday's high, which is around 146.40. Um, all right, a lot going on. Uh, do I want to do this for sure? Um, I could have switched up the order of this a little bit. I mean, basically, you have three very heavily traded large cap stocks plus NTAP. Um, NTAP's um, certainly the most uh, bullish in terms of price action. I did short a few shares to keep an eye on it. So let's look at the daily to remind myself to think of flush down below 50. Um, so we were, we, Triple bottomed here around 38 um, over the summer, early fall. And coming into earnings, it was bought. But it gapped up here to 47. It was coming back in. So this is a big gap. The question is, can it hold this? Here's our picture. Uptrend channel. Top of this uptrend channel is probably working its way into the, the low 50s now. Um, we haven't seen these prices probably since, well, here we go. Okay, you got to go back to 2011, which six years ago. So I'm not sure how relevant those prices are going to be, but some people seeing it above 50 today, maybe looking at this area right here around 53. Let's call it 53 and a half. It seems to me that it's overdone. Um, I saw some raised price targets um, right into the area where it is right now, fifty-two, fifty-three dollars. Um, it's not like it has, you know. I thought there was one, maybe one sixty-dollar target, but there's not a lot of targets much higher than where it is right now. But here's the initial move where it popped to fifty, it came back into forty-seven eighty. They bought it, and then they walked it up to fifty again. This morning, it's gapping up another two dollars. Um, the first thing I'd want to see is does it kind of have a down move to to fifty? And how does it act right in this area right here? Does it actually catch a bid here where people are willing to walk it back up? It's going to be strong today. Um, or does it make a lower high and then roll over through 50 back all the way down to around 48 and a half, 48. So right on the open, if it pops above 52, I'd maybe watch for it to pop maybe a dollar, dollar and a half. Uh, and then see if it reverted right back into this area. And then this potentially, if it does actually get at least a buck above this, you can watch to see if buyers step in here or if it uh, slices right back through to this area. So it's going to be a little bit of a wild one. 
Um, the next three should be more tame. Um, Cisco. So Cisco had a small beat and a small raise. It seems like people are excited about this because they just haven't done that in a while. Um, so people assume they wouldn't do it because they haven't been doing it for the last bunch of quarters. Um, here's what it looks like. So you have this consolidation. It got up to 34 and a half um, at the beginning of the year. It's really been a pretty good proxy for the market, right? Little volatility of very tight consolidation range all year, coming into earnings at the top of the range, um, gapping up. We go to the after hours. You can see initial pop was to 35.60, is pulled back to 35. I had some offers that I left up when I left last night. So as it made new highs of the 36, um, some offers got taken here. So I'm a little bit out of the money now. Um, there's no real resistance. Um, it hasn't been at these levels since the internet bubble. It's starting to tick down a little bit here. I guess the first thing I want to see is how does it behave um, 36 to 3580 that comes in on the open right here. And if it does, um, it doesn't hold there, the first spot, the next spot after that would be 3550. And then below that, 35. So these are all your levels. There's like kind of three areas in the downside here if it starts getting sold. The first being this, um, where it topped out yesterday in the after hours, 36 to 3580. Um, if it gets bought there and back above 3610, play it on the long side for the yeah, pre market high. Um, if it drops 3580, you want to watch to see if it comes in closer to 3550. But these these levels here, 3580, um, that's how I want to trade off of those. And it's very liquid, so you don't really have to risk much on it. Um, if you find a good spot, um, you can really put on a lot of size on this, uh, pretty much as much as you can handle. Um, so there's never more than five ten five ten cents of risk, other than like first minute or two on the open. Uh, the next one is Walmart, which just quickly I'll tell you a little story about this one. A couple of years, about two years ago, um, they had an analyst day or an investors day, and they guided down, and I bought into this down move. Here it is, right here. I actually lost money because I was buying into here and into here. And what they did was they reset guidance for the next three to five years or something like that. And once they did that, it went down for like another month or two. And then ever since then, um, by resetting people's psychology and expectations, they've now been able to take out um, the all-time high. Um, now, obviously, the fundamentally, they're starting to do a little bit better now with their online sales. and um, They're doing better. Um, so that's helping. But this reset of expectations um, really just brought it down to the lows and it's been in an uptrend channel since. Now it's started to go a little vertical here as it took out the prior high. $95, wow. Okay, so how many momentum stock? Um, so this one normally trades 7 million, easily could trade 20 million shares today. Um, Let's use, what did I put on the sheet? 94 pre-market, okay. So 94 I added a pre-market resistance. It's not clearly got up a dollar since I put that in there. Um, that's going to be the inflection. If it's holding above 94, you're putting it on the long side. It's holding below 94. Um, try long. Confirmation on a real short trade would have to take out probably 90, 93.60-ish. This little support here, this band from the pre-market. It's already traded a million shares. Um, so we can see that people, people like this, but... Um, as I said, it's easily do 15, 20 million shares today or more. So um, let's see what happens right on right on the open. I would expect it, it's up five dollars already. I don't think it's got much more upside than this. Um, you know, on, it's going into the open or right on the open. Maybe it'll pop another fifty cents a dollar, ninety six at that point. Um, it's going to be tough to push it higher. It's already up six percent. Might be the biggest move. I think gap up. Let's see here. Yeah, it gapped up back on um, in October. It looks like it was up around four or five percent. Went up the next day too. So, but this might be the biggest percentage move I've seen in it ever. Um, 
Okay, Best Buy. It looks like the market was a little bit confused on Best Buy. Um, they didn't put it, bring out a lot with the numbers. Um, what I have in here. So everything was in line. They guided the EPS lower. Um, Jesus Christ, this fucking sucks. Um, they guided this lower uh, on the EPS a few percent, and that seems like what pushed it to 54 and a half here. On the daily, I think 55 is the level. So we have 54 and a half, 55. I guess yesterday's low, 56. It's now trying to support there. Yesterday's high, 57. Um, certainly can have an alert here at 57. Certainly want to take a look at it um, at the 55, 54 and a half. Um, but I think the other the other stocks I mentioned um, at this point, um, should, I would focus more of my attention on those those other ones. Uh, next thing is Target. She was gonna, I was tired last night. I was going to write a blog post about this. Um, I got a little burnt on this right on the open on the, um, it's kind of based on the fact that it was probing this 58 here in the pre-market. I thought 56 would, or flush through 56 would work as a good support. We know that it very quickly got down to the next long-term support. You can take a look at it on the daily. Um, I realized it quickly enough not to get obliterated. Um, so we have 56 here. I don't even really talk about this 54, which is, you know, the long-term support from August and September where it held there for a week before ripping to the upside. Um, I recognize that probably when it was screwed around in the 55 area, it had flushed through 55 and then come back up and I was taking sales. Um, and, um, but once mentally I had shifted to like, holy shit, they're really selling this. It could probe that 54. Um, that is what saved me. But it, it's a good reminder that I really was, I didn't have enough expansive thinking in terms of as I was watching the pre-market action. I'm like, uh, eh, it's probing 58. It'll come into this little pivot right here. It'll get back above. The numbers weren't that bad. Um, but I didn't listen to the conference call, so I might have said something on there spooky. Um, and so my so I wasn't thinking about this this even more important support, which was, you know, this was like a pivot low here most recently before it made a high. Um, but this one actually, people held it here for a week. Um, and so anybody who bought there, I mean, obviously we were talking about it on the mic when it was getting down there, and that was a level. And I, I said 55 and a half was a good target area, and it did get back up to that 55 and a half, I think twice actually. Once on the open and once in the afternoon. Um, but I mean, my goodness, it actually closed down here at 54. So it does look like it could take this out. Um, so that's that's kind of my mindset is, you know, can it take out this 54 today? Um, if it does, there's really not much until well, 53.40, there's a little bit, and then 52.60. So um, and then obviously we want to really be paying attention to 55 and a quarter to 55 and a half. If, if big hedge funds change their mind, think this is overdone here. Um, and it takes this this morning bounce high out and this afternoon bounce high out. Um, you could be looking at a move back to kind of where this started from uh, the down to 5670. Uh, MTSI. So MTSI, let's compare it to kind of what we talked about in the morning meeting. So morning meeting, um, we had 34 and 33. Right on the open, it did pop above 33. Got the 33 and a half, quickly was below and held 33 a couple times before trending down kind of all the way to our support at $30. Um, in a series of lower highs. And it's, it's right at 30 there, so you would think that um, this is another one. Uh, this is actually a better down. I think this is a better than target for um, downside second day play. Just looking at the daily. Below 30, I think 20 and a half is what we talked about yesterday in the morning meeting. Um, so that's what, that's that's the thought process below 30. And then finally, Mary, I don't know if there's really a trade in this today, but I just wanted to kind of point out, um, you know, I bought this in the pre-market. We talked about it, did a secondary. I told you I got in at 24. Um, there was a chance for everyone else to get in. You know, I bought it here in the pre-market, right on the open. Um, it did it did flush to where I bought it in the pre-market and quickly got back above. 
um, and then came back up to this prior day area, which I thought was a decent target area. Um, I wasn't watching it around the desk um, after it got above 26, but this is a great example. Um, let me just explain this to you a little bit. Um, we do talk, we put on the morning idea sheet in the first section, secondaries from time to time, and there's, there's various setups. But um, when a stock makes a run from like 22 to 28, and they announce a secondary, um, they're trying to take advantage of the fact that they've either had some good news or people are buying it up because there's something positive going on. And then when they announce a secondary, it normally gaps down. Um, if I'm the open in the first hour, it goes up and then it's just holding above the morning high, consolidating. It means likely they're going out to institutions and there's pretty strong demand for the secondary. Um, so you want to buy it when it's holding above this, you know, this kind of breakout price from the day before 26. You don't want to risk more than 20, 30 cents here. Um, but if it holds that 26, you might get a move to 28. And in this case, it actually went up to above the prior day's high. It went up another dollar and a half. But, um, you know, this is why we announce stocks that gap down on secondary. Sometimes uh, <laughs> there's a lot of upside there because there's demand. Um, there's, a, there's demand for that secondary. Um, sometimes they're not good demand. Sometimes a stock, maybe it'll run up. Um, you know, in this case, it actually had come down into it. So that's one of the things that helped. But sometimes coming into a secondary, maybe a stock that had got up to like 34 to 36 and it'll gap down and it'll just keep going because it's, it's, it's run up so much coming into it. But um, these are, there, there's not a lot of trades in them intraday, like something that's really in play, super in play, but, um, but there's certainly, there's usually one or two good trades that are worth a buck or two um, off of key levels. So that's my little lesson on secondaries for today. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.